All right, so we have seen the uh, standard APIs um, uh, in, and what is called Postman in the last few videos. Now in this videos, we are going to test it. Okay, the standard API provided by Salesforce, we have to go and test it. So uh, in the last video, we have seen how to reach to this particular page. I actually went to, uh, I logged into Workbench and from Workbench, I went to uh, this you know utility rest explorer and from there i clicked on execute and from there i search for s object lead and here here is the lead standard api link okay so now i have to copy this link and you know this is what going to be your api or the web service but this is not the complete url that you would be using in the postman to test it so what is this url this url will help you to you know uh, do the create update delete operations from postman as of now in this video we will see how to you know create update delete the data uh, of this lead object from postman and now once we're done with that then we will see you know how you can write a apex code to get the same thing done all right so this URL is not completed. What you need exactly to get this URL completed is you need to add something called base URL. Okay, so this base URL is what you have to find from your Salesforce org and you have to copy and paste it before this particular service slash, you know, uh, data thing, right? And the, the question is, how, where will you go and get the base URL? So check this out. If you go to your Salesforce org, right, this URL that you see, right, that's not the base URL, by the way. This URL looks like lightning.force.com, but your, you know, uh, the URL that I'm talking about, base URL will will be ending with salesforce.com. So how will you get it? You have to go to your developer dot developer console. Once you go to your developer console here, you have the base URL. Either you can copy from here, or let me give you a quick code. Okay, so if you open your anonymous window, in your anonymous window, you can execute this particular line system.debug you are trying to print the base url so system class system.url dot get salesforce base url this will help you to print the base url which you can copy okay so if i click on execute highlighted i got this executed and i will just open this log double click on this log and if i click on debug only here is my base url which is nothing but this url only okay but this url is different like the url that you get to see in the developer console is different than your salesforce you know apps url right here it's ending with lightning.force.com correct so copy this url from here i'll just copy this particular url till salesforce.com and now i'm going to add it before the service part so copy this url from here go to your base url i'll just replace this base url with the actual url okay and if i paste it it looks like this so this is from here till here is my base url from here till here this is what the standard api that i have copied from workbench now my endpoint this is called endpoint by the way right this is called endpoint or url or rest api whatever you say right so my api is ready my Salesforce given standard API is ready. Now I'm going to show you how can you test it. So copy this API, open your Postman. This is my Postman. You have to come to this particular screen. Okay, go to your home screen and you know, if you can click on this plus tab, right? To get into this screen. If you are not able to see the screen, please create a workspace. And inside the workspace, you will get this particular screen. So you have to come to this screen. Once you land into the screen, you know, paste your URL. So this was my URL, right? So I have pasted it over here. And see, this URL will help you to get, uh, you know, get the lead data from lead object. This URL will help you to, you know, uh, what do you call, uh, you know, create a data from the in the lead object. This URL will again help you to delete the data. All you need to do is you have to use the proper method. You remember in the last video, I told you get method is will help you to get the data. Post method will help you to create the data in the lead object. Put and patch put is basically your absurd thing patch will update this and delete will delete it. So all these operations we can actually perform from the same URL. Let's do one thing uh, before I even get into this, uh, uh, you know, uh, operation mode, right? Let me quickly tell you something called bearer token. Okay. See this URL, anybody can hit anybody from postman can hit this URL and maybe can disrupt the, you know, data. I mean, they can enter the data, delete the data, right? 
So how can you make sure that your URL is authenticated properly? It's not, nobody can hack it, correct? So for that, you need one more thing that is called bearer token. What is the token? How will you find it? First of all, go back to your developer console, okay? And here you have another lines to, to execute. So this system class has something called user info dot get session ID. You have to get this particular session ID. This session ID you have to copy because I'm doing it from postman. You have to copy this hard coded session ID. Next video, I'm going to show you how you can write an Apex class to get the same integration done, replacing the, uh, you know, uh, postman, right? Because, you know, in, in your real time project, you cannot use postman, right? Postman is just for you to test that API. That's it. I'm just testing it. But you know, in real time, uh, you know, in application, all you have to do is you have to write code in the Apex and call this API, not from Postman. So that time you will see how to, uh, what, uh, you know, there's something called, um, you know, uh, connected app that you have to use. But as of now, we will copy this particular uh, session ID. So uh, I will just provide you these two lines of code, which will help you to go to your anonymous window in your developer console and get you the session ID. So let me just click on this execute highlighted and uh, this is my log, double click on the latest log, debug only. Here I have the session ID. Please copy the session ID from here till here. <clears throat> Correct. So I have copied my session ID and the session ID, I have to put it here. Okay. The session ID, I have to put it over here. So all you have to do is copy your base URL plus that service slash thing paste it over here. That's your endpoint. Go to authorization and in the authorization, select bearer token, right? Because you have to authenticate the API. Once you select the bearer token, you have to control V. You have to paste that particular token, the session ID that you have got from your Salesforce. Once you're done with that, all you need to do is click on send. So whatever method you have selected now, based on the method, the API will behave like that. So you have selected get method. What does it mean? It means it will fetch the data. So if you now scroll down, it will just show me all the records that I have inside my Salesforce order. I have only one record that is name that name is Alex. That's why it's showing me only one data. If you have hundred data, it will show you all the data. So get method is doing what? It is actually helping you to get the data from this API or from this lead object, right? So we are actually testing the standard lead API. Now I'm going to show you the post method. So post method, it what it does? It basically creates the data. So when you're trying to create the data, you have to pass the parameters, right? And guess what? Salesforce, uh, I mean, whenever you pass the parameters, right? It understands the JSON, okay? There is a format called JSON format, like how you write text, no? That kind of a format, JSON format. I'm gonna show you how the JSON format looks like. You have to exactly use that format to provide the, you know, field value. Like, you know, I think in lead, uh, last name, company name, and status is mandatory, right? So I'm, I have to provide this last name uh, company and what do you call the, uh, the, the status through this particular JSON body. So go to the body. You have to go to the body here. Okay. And if you go to the body, right here, you can go to raw and then you have an option whether you can, whether to provide the JSON body, text body, JavaScript body or whatever. Select JSON here. Here you have to write the JSON. So normally how the JSON looks like, this is the format. Okay. You have to put this in a <clears throat> double quotation. Okay. Let's say the name of the field is last name, L-A-S-T, last name, name, one small colon you have to put, another, uh, what do you call, uh, double bracket, and then you have to give the name here. Let's say Rajesh testing, <laughs> right? Then comma, um, what is the next mandatory field you have in leads company? So company, you have to give test company and uh, status. By the way, here you cannot do spelling mistake, okay? So if the spelling mistake is there, then you'll get an error. So status is this. I think I am pretty much good with the JSON. JSON always start with this particular bracket. Okay. So make sure you give the proper bracket and, uh, you know, right. Format this properly. So this is my JSON and my JSON is ready. Now all I have to do is click on send button, right? So if I click on send, what happened is because I'm using here post method, this post method is actually creating a data. And once you create the data, remember I told you that in the last video, what you're doing, you're sending a request and you're getting a response. What I'm sending as a request, this value, last name, company name, status, whatever field value that you want, you are sending this as a request. What you're getting as a response is this ID. 
once the data is created this particular standard api is giving you back the id of the record so i'll just quickly copy this id if i go back and uh, try to open this record now see this record has been created with name whatever name company name and status i had provided right so correct this is the data company name is test company name is rajesh testing right that's the same data which i created which i passed i mean this is the parameter which i passed and this got created okay very simple right this you just have to copy paste the uh, api select which method pass the parameter body and make sure you select this raw and select this json as a format right once you're done select this uh, send button to create the data to send the request and once you send the request you get this um, you know response that id so now i have seen the get method the post method what next next is uh, let's update this okay so you know you can actually use patch patch is the update operation right see for update basically you might have millions of record in lead object but which exact record you are trying to update right so that record id you have to pass here so i'm going to copy this id from here because you are trying to update this record right so you have to pass it over here lead slash control v understood so here right after the lead you have to pass the id because you are trying to update one single record right so you are passing this id and then whatever you want to update let's say my i, I just want to update the company name as uh test company 123 right test company 123 if i click on send see the magic now i mean you don't get the response but i mean this record has actually been updated let me show you this see the company name was test company but if i refresh this company name will be now test company 123 because i just have updated it from my postman all right this is how you update it correct so update is very simple you have to pass the parameter uh, in the parameter you have to pass the record id which you are trying to update and delete works like same okay you just have to select the delete method when you are trying to delete the data right it doesn't matter if you are passing the parameter or not because delete you are anyway deleting the data right what's the point of passing any uh, you know uh, body or parameters no need to pass anything even though you pass that's not a problem just click on send see now this record will be deleted if i go back and try to refresh this record has been deleted correct all right so this is how the postman will help you to test any record remember this whenever you get into this integration project right we cannot write the code from the uh, you know you get the api is right from the uh, erp system or third party system you cannot write the code uh, from the day one right you have first have to test it you have to know what parameters you have to pass and all and once you are done with this particular demo right then you are good to go and create the apex class so this video we are pretty much cleared how to uh, you know test the api and how to test the especially the standard api next video what i'm going to do is this particular standard api i'm going to create as a custom api so we as a developer we write apex code to create custom api this is what we are going to learn in the next video right and once we create that custom api we will again test that custom api right from your same postman i will just remove this uh, you know standard api put that custom api and test it and once we test that api once everything is fine the development is done what are you going to do is we're going to call that custom api from a real salesforce org okay so see the end end game is going to be like this so i'm going to have two different salesforce org end of the day once we learn the entire salesforce uh, integration right the, we will do a project where we will have two org one salesforce org second salesforce org in this first salesforce org when you create a data same data will be created in the second salesforce org in the first salesforce org when you update or delete the data same will be reflecting in the second org this is how because i don't have two different systems so i am trying to integrate two different salesforce org okay this is how i'm going to show you how integration is to be done okay so let's go to the next video and see how you can create a custom uh, salesforce api okay rest api basically all right so see you in the next video